Again, I want to appreciate Sister Danette. God bless you and your team. Brother Ross Parker's with us today. God bless you, Brother Ross, working on the sound and cameras today. Thank you for joining the panel. Sister Felicia Gaston, help me appreciate her as well. Sister M Melissa Pelham, God bless you. And uh, they have more others who work with the team. But let me just start by saying thank you all for representing the singles. Thank you for representing those who are not on the stage today. And uh, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to throw the ball into your court, Sister Donette. Tell us about last Friday night first, all right? And then um, let's, let's talk about why we're here today. Tell us about the singles department. Okay, good afternoon, folks. On Friday, for those of you who joined us, thank you so much, and I know you enjoyed it. It was very interactive, and Dr. Schiller really enlightened us with his expertise in that area. He has a love for singles, and he really... Um, turned out for us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I wanted to just throw out there, Pastor, I don't know if I'm inappropriate by saying this, but I forgot to collect a little donation for his organization. So if you feel led to do that, please send it to the city church and mention, um, make a note that it's for Dr. Schuller, Clarence Schuller, for the singles. Amen. Uh, we are here because we want the singles to know that they are not forgotten. Amen. They are uh, appreciated. They are not alone. We are not alone. I am a single too, single again. Uh, I want and I love the fact that pastors are allowing us this medium to do this because when I was growing up, people in the church would tell us, don't commit adultery, don't, but we never got the training. We never got the, the information we needed, like Sister Stevens said. I wanted to be married when I was young, in my 20s, in the church, but that was my focus. I wanted to get married because I didn't want to commit a sin. That's not what we're all about. And we're training the younger Christians to understand that first and foremost, you have to seek God. You have to be in that frame of mind where Serving God is your first and foremost obligation in the church. Getting married comes along if it does happen, but you should seek to serve God first. And that's why we're doing this. Thank you for adding that, Sister Donette. And uh, you, you gave us a statement, and we have it on the screen, by the way. What is the purpose? What is the purpose of a, an adult singles ministry. And I want to preface this because as you all have heard, you know, for 26 years of ministry, we've always kind of focused on the young people, the young singles, those who are college students, 18, 19, 20, but the DNA has changed. And, and can you speak to who is the typical single today at the city church? At the city church, we have a not so normal dynamics as what I remember growing up with. Most of us are older singles here. We do have a few. I'm glad for Brother Ross Parker sitting right here, uh, 31 years old, and looks younger, <laughs> but he is. <laughs> Perfect example, he's working in the church. He's serving God by working. I, I really appreciate that. This church is made up of singles that have never been married, male or female, single that have children but never been married. We have divorced single members here with children and without children. We have widowed singles here with children, without children, some with grown children. We have singles here that are seniors. And I really love the senior singles in this church because they're very supportive. Mother Helen, Mother Green, Sister Vernice, I really, and all the mothers that are online, I really appreciate y'all. I, I look to the older singles as examples. And we don't want to have, another point I wanted to make, we don't want to have our younger singles waiting until they're seniors before they're really appreciating their Very singleness. True. They need to appreciate being single as a young person, a young Christian in the church. So. The purpose of the adult singles ministry here is to help all Christian single adults grow in their spiritual, social, and personal lives and to minister to the needs of all other singles. 
The model for the singles ministry is to empower a group of like-minded individuals so that they can develop as vibrant singles and foster relationships. Relationships is not only between a man and a woman. Mm. Relationship is relationship with me and you as a church member here. We have to know how to relate to each other in all stages of our lives. Yes. So we have the married couples and they are getting their training, they're communicating with each other, they're teaching each other by being examples to each other. We want the singles to do the same. Yes, amen, amen. amen. Okay. Sister Felicia, I know you have a different perspective on the singles ministry. I heard you Friday. <laughs> and um, can you give us what your perspective of just singles, just share it with the church and um, I did share um, Friday night that I'm not one that's always quick to join a singles ministry because for me at this point in my life, and just to give you a little bit of my story, I've been saved and single, I've been saved and engaged, I've been saved and married, I've been saved and separated, I was almost saved and divorced, and now I'm saved and widowed. So um, I think because my story has been a little different than most I'm not one that wants to sit around with a group of women talking about how to get a man. That is so not my focus. Um, there's so much more to me than that. There's so much more to all of us than that. Some of the things that we should be talking about, in my opinion, as a single, um, are some of the same things that married couples talk about. Not so much the sexual aspect, because we know we believe the Bible and the Bible is right. But beyond that, there's so much more to my single life than having another husband and having a boyfriend and going out and dating. There, it's just so much more to life than that. And if he has given me abundant life, then what is that abundant life for me as a single person? And I will say, I don't want to be lumped into a group of 25-year-old singles, because I'm not 25. That we have very different focuses at that point. A 25-year-old woman, it's nothing wrong with desiring a husband and children. I don't want no children at this point in my life. I don't even want to keep my godchildren if I don't have to. I'm just being honest. I love my nephew. He's seven years old, but I'm so glad when his mom comes to pick him up or when his dad comes to pick him up, that's just who I am. I, I love him, but I have no desire to be with him 24 hours a day. So I think we need to look at the different aspects of being single. Thank you, uh, Sister Felicia. We're covering and trying to just canvas from a comprehensive perspective, different views of being single, different views, and you've certainly added a whole nother dynamic, and we thank you for that. Brother Ross, you're here today, and I know that this was a last second sw switch up for you, and we appreciate you being willing to represent the, the male population of singles in the church, but you're not, you not kind of single single, you kind of non pseudo single give us your space talk about your space introduce yourself tell us you know because you're, you're, you're new here and man i tell you but first of all thank you for serving because you you remind me of how we were years ago you come to the church you don't it don't take you a long time to say hey i see a need let me get involved so we appreciate you for serving in the ministry doing what you do for sound and audio and lighting and cameras and all that but give talk talk about talk about us who's ross and and w w what's happening in ross's world Single, but yet also, and I'll let you tell the rest. Okay. I'm Ross Parker. You came to me probably 30 minutes ago and said, are you trying to talk in a singles ministry? I said, well, I'm not technically single. You're trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> so he kind of threw me off in the back just maybe 30 minutes ago. It's my girlfriend back there. Um, her name is Katie McMahon. Um, we've been dating. Um, we've dated probably four and a half years now. And she just been she she's just pressing my vision, you know. Ever since you know I moved to North Carolina, it's kind of crazy I moved to North Carolina because I told my dad. My dad was up in Chicago at the time, and I told him that I wanted to move to North Carolina. And he kind of took a leap of faith and quit everything in all his situations and moved to North mm. Carolina wow. and put me in a predicament to where I could move in and I didn't have enough money at the time to buy a house. So um, just being honest, me and my dad fought for maybe a year, not in a bad way. He's like, you ain't gonna be living around here and be paying no bills. And all this other type of stuff. But he didn't understand that I couldn't really physically pay the bills because I was trying to save up for a house. And the way I operate, 
I don't really tell a lot of people what I what I have going on in my life. And I wanna kinda I wanted to surprise them as as a man growing up. Yeah. Like that, I don't need you. Not saying it that way, I need you in the sense of you, you can help me out, but I don't need you. I can do my own. I can I don't need you to, um, to, to, to depend on. And a little bit about me, I got in a real bad car accident um, probably three years ago. And my dad kept telling me, you need to come down, you need to come down. And my plan was to come down probably in August. God's plan was for me to come down, I think, in, I think July. And that car accident shifted me down here. Wow. Not only, um, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Not only that, the first day I got down here, I got um, I got the opportunity to literally go to Seth Curry, not Steph's, the brother, um, Steph, Seth Curry's basketball camp. And I do a lot of sports media stuff. And I, I actually got a chance to meet him and, and stuff like that. The craziest part about that is that if I had never gotten that car accident, I probably wouldn't be a school teacher. And the person, the assistant principal's child was at the school that I applied for, was at the Seth Curry camp. Wow. He got me that job. Wow, wow, you're working it out. So, in terms of being single, I, I want to just let the, the youth know it's no rush to get married. I don't have any children. You know, I have, I want a daughter. First of all. I want like a daughter. It's always been a little different for me. You know, and I just want a daughter. It's, it's no rush at all. I'm telling you because she puts no pressure on me to get married. The more, the woman that puts pressure on you a lot of times, she's not the one for you. You know, when, when God, when it's God's time, when you're ready and all of that, that's the time for you. If you're not financially suitable or ready to have children, that's, that's another job you added to your life. So you need to just be patient. Find the, the one that's for you. And that, that's my advice for you. Come on, clap your hands and let's appreciate Brother Reggie. School teacher. Oh, I got one more thing to say. Yeah. Your family, how about that? Y'all help me thank God for Brother Ross. Thank you, man, for sharing that, and congratulations on those achievements and that we celebrate. We have a video, but before we show this next video, Sister Melissa Pelham is with us, and Sister Melissa is just one of those, you know, she's, she's like one of those quiet assassins, right? She's so powerful. She's so influential. Don't say a whole lot, but when she does speak, she speaks, right? But she's been such an encouragement, such a, a dependable, faithful woman of God. We, we celebrate her today. Sister Melissa, talk, talk to us about your singleness, your space, Give us an introduction for those who don't know you, those who are online. But, you know, what does singleness mean to you? Amen. Uh, my name is Melissa, and I have been in Charlotte for over 10 years now. My home is Cleveland, Ohio. And um, um, I've enjoyed being in Charlotte. Uh, my occupation is a construction accountant for a multifamily home builder. And I love this church. Um, I will say that... Uh, being unmarried at this time, and yes, I do desire it, and I know God has it for me. I have not lacked anything in my life. God has been good to me. Um, I've done what I wanted to do. I've traveled. I've hobbies, whatever I want to develop. I've d dated, you know, and continue to do that, but I haven't lacked anything in my life, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, and like what Felicia was saying, I think you know, the stigma is that if you are unmarried, that you're lonely. And that's not true. That is not true. There's a lot of married people who are lonely. But just because you don't have a spouse doesn't mean that you're lonely. Um, but I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just thankful for this season in my life. And um, I will say to young people, know what your purpose is. If you don't know what God has for you or who you are, pray about that. What is my purpose? What are the things that you like to do? 
Uh, because nine times out of ten, God wants to show you who you are before you meet that spouse. We're going to take the last few moments of our time together today and just do a little Q&A. Uh, my wife? You want to on the floor? Just... Well, what I want to do is this. We have, a, we have at least one or two questions here that have come from online. But then we want you all to feel comfortable. Just where you stand and just kind of stand up and shout your question out. And one of these panelists can take an opportunity to answer that. And then for those who are serving online today, if you need to, uh, you can text my wife's cell phone, whatever those online questions are, through the media room. They'll relate to us. And maybe we can answer a question online as well. Okay, so Pastor Sharon, you had a question. Well, someone asked this question. They said, how, how long is too long to date someone? How long is too long to date? Anybody go ahead. Uh, I, th <laughs> I think that's a personal preference. It depends on how old you are. Mm -hmm. If you're 20, 25, you, you have more time. But if you, this is my personal opinion. If you 45, 50, and you dating for five, six, seven years, that's just me. I think that's too long. Because mm -hmm. you, you should be at a point in your life where you know what you want. That's you good. Know? And hopefully, if you are dating somebody, you guys are on the same timetable. Mm -hmm. So that's just my personal opinion. And I would say, too, what's the objective of the dating? What, what do you want to be the end result of the dating? Mm -hmm. If you just want to date, then I don't see there's a, where there would be a time frame. If you are desiring marriage, then see if that person is also desiring the same thing. That's good. Now, real quick, dating. Again, we've been out the game for a long time. What does dating mean? Because you just said something. The, the, the objective, the, the purpose. What, what does that mean? Well, for me, I think it's just spending time with the, with the opposite sex doing like-minded things. Mm -hmm. With the objection of marriage or no? If that's what those two people want. I don't think... It's, because I... I I'm sorry. I know the church is typically taught that you shouldn't be dating if you are not planning to get married. I don't personally agree with that. I enjoy male company. I like to hear the male mindset. And so I have male friends that I date, that I go out with. So why not? And, and people differ with that because if, in my opinion, if I'm dating someone, my objective is marriage. I'm getting to know that person, so we'll set a time where we spend time together to get to know each other. That's my understanding of dating. Mm -hmm. But the end goal, the end results, in my opinion, is marriage. You tell them up front? Is that up front? Yes. That's up front. It's always good to be up front yeah. with what you are looking for, what your outcome is, what you intend it to, to be. Tell the person, I. I'm not here just to socialize and have right. a pen pal. My objective That's is good. marriage. If I'm dating, now if I'm not in the mindset to be married, I personally won't date. Yeah, I wouldn't call it dating. I go out with my friends. So is that like going friends. out? That's what I'm saying. Is it like it's, you're just going out to dinner, hanging out with a guy? Yes. Is that different from dating? Because let me say this, I've talked to a man one sister had dated for 13 years. She said, all my 20s had been gone. Some of my, I, I, I've talked to several sisters. One said, I started dating this guy in high school. My 20s gone, now I'm in my 30s, and I still don't know what he wants to do. We bought a house together, we have kids, and another sister. And so that's, I mean, to me, that breaks my heart yes. because what are they holding on for? I said, so exactly. is he, is he going to marry you? What's going on? And thank God one con contacted me the other day and said, we are getting married in May. You know, after been dating for like four or five years, kids and all that. So it breaks my heart because sometimes women are waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting and your life is gone. Mm -hmm. And then I heard another story the other day. Someone got married, you know, was dating. It's just some situations. It's just some situations. I got to watch what I say. I'm a, I'm a therapist, so I got to watch what I say. Um, but these people weren't in therapy with me. Um, but I'm just saying, it's just some situations. And let me tell you this, I've just seen a lot of hurt women, and we wonder why the African-American woman can be so bitter and so mean and so cantankerous. How has that man treated her? And you wait all these years, and then he marries somebody else. Mm. 
So, I, I, Lynette, I, I mean, Danette, I believe you got to be clear because it's one thing to go out. To, I said, Danette, it's one thing to go out to dinner and you're just hanging. But if you're dating that person for years and years and years, where are you going with this? What, what, what are we accomplishing? So, can, but, I, can I interject on that, uh, Sister Sharon? And that's so true. I think women are afraid to ask, where are we going with this? Mm. You have a right to be in control of your life. And after a certain amount of time, if, if you don't know what we're doing, ask the question. Yes. And then sometimes I think they're afraid of the answer. Yes. You know, ask questions because your life, this is your life. This is your life. And I heard a situation ship. We had a women's fellowship one time. See, I'd be talking to the women like this, so I'd be knowing. Situation ship. you like in a situation, you know what you're doing, so it's a situation ship. It's not dating relationship, it's just you in a situation. So I'm just saying. Brother Ross, you have another perspective, I see. <laughs> talking to Mike. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, I feel like a lot of people aren't going to agree with what I'm saying, but when, it's, when you take somebody out, I think it change the terminology of date. The first thing shouldn't be a date because uh, it's confused to say, okay, we're dating after two, three days. All right. So I have a question for y'all. What is, is marriage? Is marriage 50%? So half, it should be, should marriage is half and half? Does it, does, it, does it operate that way? It's one, 100. 100 and 100. No, it's 100 and 100? Mm-hmm. Okay. In other two whole people. That's how marriage should be. Yep. Okay, because I feel like if you don't really... I, I, this is just my perspective. On the first date, I don't mind paying. That's just me. Mm -hmm. Literally, if you're just meeting somebody, you don't know anything about them. Like Y'all should split the bill. That's just my perspective. I agree. That's just me, though. <laughs> Now, we did that. Somebody, somebody go get Katie. I think she just walked out we the door. Uh, brother, brother Reggie, you may want to go get you. Okay. No, we did that. Because there, there are people now that would be there. I pay for my own food. Now, literally, just go out on dates just mm -hmm. because they need, they need food somebody or whatever. Pay. Yeah. Somebody to pay. Yeah. So, next, the second or third That's time, good. I don't, I don't, that's literally my opinion, but if you're paying, question. but if you're. Okay. <laughs> Come on. You're single. <laughs> he said he does not speak on behalf of all men. Hold on. For those that are online, dating is a two people in courtship courting each other with the expectation of being in a relationship. If there's no expectation of relationship, they're not dating. That's my point. So why, so why is it called, that's my point. So why is it called a date? Because I'm, I, I'm with you, I don't mind. I don't mind dating, but is dating? If I we on a date, what's the second and third time? Is it still are we, are we dating or is it still a date? So that's that's just, that's that's just go out the first that's time good. and say as, as friends we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. Let me. And that's why you have a conversation. That's, that's good. good. That's right. And and let me say, I just want to make a point to something Pastor Sharon said. Um, women and men, you don't have to settle. If that's not the person for you, if that's not going in the way that you needed to go for your life, then stop seeing them. That's why you're not married. You can walk away. I, I have a quote. My favorite quote right now is that everything that settles ends up at the bottom. You don't have to settle. You don't have to date that man 10, 12 years if you know you want to be married. And you, have you don't have to allow him to drag his feet. And two, you don't want him standing up at the altar because somebody's got a shotgun to him, too. You want him to be at that altar because he loves you and he wants to marry you. So don't allow him to take up so much of your time keeping you from some other person that is interested in you, that wants to date you, yes, that might want yes. to potentially marry you. And vice versa. And vice versa, yes. yes. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. I just want to say one more thing. Okay. Okay, so I'm not, I'm, to answer, to answer the question, um, I, don't, I don't really know the right time, but I think 10 years is too long. Um, 10 years is definitely too long. But it depends on the situation because you could be dating for six, seven years. I'm not at that point yet, so I'm just doing it all day. Um, but it, a pandemic can happen, and then it puts you behind two, three years. So you just never know the situation. So you got to know if you just bought a house, if you have, what, what bills are you paying and stuff. Because marriage costs money. So I mean, if you want to get married and all that, it costs money. So you got it. Ten years is way too long, so I would say maybe 
Seven, eight years? Now, we had mentioned this earlier, and, and they're correct. Years ago, we taught that you, if you're not ready to get married, you're not ready to date. I remember saying that a thousand and one times. That was the culture we came out of. Things have changed now. One of the more noticeable things that are available today that we didn't have was online dating. Obviously, social media is what it is today. But then you have the single.com, singlemate.com, christiansingle.com, blackchristiansingle.com. We didn't have that back in the 80s and 90s. So the question someone asked was, faith without works is dead. For those who are waiting for a husband or a wife, does this phrase fit? If so, where is the line drawn? When is the works considered too much or meddling in God's business? I think I can make that really short and ask a question. When you meet people online, are you meddling in God's fate or destiny of people meeting? Can someone answer that? Well, I'm personally not an online dater, so I can't speak to dating online. Um, there was a, I think his name is Dr. Willie Jolly. He made a very um, interesting point the other day because he, he talks about relationships and that kind of thing as well. And he was saying to the men, chasing a woman and finding a wife are two different things. Mm. He said that chasing implies that 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 you are running after is running from you. Mm -hmm. So he was saying if she doesn't show interest in you, leave her alone That's good. so for for me as far as faith without works is dead um i would say occupy until he comes live your life yes live your life live your best life i i want to say this it's going to make it everything take a whole nother turn oh, you got your hand up. let me let me say this let me take a whole nother turn pastor stevens because i want to talk about Okay, but I, can I interject this? Because this may open up a can. It will open up a can of worms. Okay, because I had someone ask me this question. Because we're talking about premarital sex and sex and all that with singles, and it's a challenge. Because like I said, we go totally opposite of what God is telling us to do. It's a challenge. And someone said, "Well, how will you know um, what you're getting if you don't try it out?" They said, "How do you know what you're getting if you never sleep with the person before you get married?" Because that's, the, that's how the world thinks. That's how people in the church think. And I said, so what do you mean by that? They were like, well, if you don't try it out, how do you know if they're good and bad? And I said, well, let me, well, first of all, when you have, when you've committed to Christ and you allow God to give you a transformed mind, it's not about you being satisfied. Yeah. It's about you satisfying that that's person right. and, you're, and you're learning together. Because as my husband made the point, I got married a virgin. And thank God for keeping me because I desired to be kept because I saw sex, sex all around me in my household. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was nothing for somebody to be laying around, you know what I'm saying, sleeping around. So for me to say I want to be kept, it's not because I didn't have opportunity. So they said, so, so I, that's a whole nother area. Because we, like we don't like to go there in, in marriage, but singles, this, this, is, this is a struggle. Just being, keeping it honest. Well, my take on that is you don't have to try out nothing. If you are serving God, you are a child of God, and your desire is to marry. You serve God and let God. It, it, the word said he will find it a wife. It didn't say he, she who find it a husband. So, like in my notes, I had where... Um, uh, the, the, the woman, the, the widow that was serving, that had the little flour and oil and then Elijah came and um, she gave of what she had and then God provided for her. You give God what you have yeah. to give God and God will give you what you need. So if it's the same thing with the man. If the man desire a wife that, that he wants to uh, the, the, the ideal woman that he's looking for. Pray about it. Tell God about it. Don't worry about whether the one that God sends him is going to be satisfying to him or not because God will send the one that you desire. So you don't have to try it out. And, and this, this is for somebody. I'm sorry. This is for somebody too. 
uh, sex does not have to be a deal breaker. Women do not feel like you have to have sex with someone to keep him. It's, I know three good friends that got married later on in life and put it on the table. This is how it is. And they got married. Brought up the issue, we're not having sex, I'm not doing that. Been there, done that, not doing that. Three of them, middle-aged women, put it on the table. This is how it's going to be, and got married. So sex is not a deal breaker. Okay, when I spoke of online dating, the question that I had about online dating, your response is that it is not corrupt communication. You're making a comparison and a distinction that there's a difference between carnal dating and Christian dating. Because we are Christians, we're peculiar, we're, we, we are of the word of God, and there should be a, a clear line of difference. Can I, can I summarize and, and ask this question? So basically, when it comes to online dating, it's not corrupt communication as long as, as Christians, we understand the Christian values of that contemporary method. As long as we're staying clean, pure into scripture. Just another way in a method and a means, as long as you stay in your Christian conviction. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Madison Dover. Um, and as a college student, uh, my peers... They ask that question a lot. Uh, why? Why do you need to? Uh, why uh, can't you test drive? Um, and my response um, is, Why do I need to test drive when God has a specifically made custom car made for me? So I just wanted to let the uh, young Perfect. people know. <laughs> I wanted to let the young people know that's what you can respond when people ask you that question. I don't need a test drive. Because God has a custom-made car that's brand new, and everything around is used. So why do I need to test drive them when I have something that God has set aside? That's all I want to say. Okay. So I want to start, Melissa, with you, and we're going to go this way. What, what would be, what would be your last, what, what would be your parting thoughts from today's conversation and in, in today's dialogue? What, what would be your parting thoughts? And if you need a little help, what would you tell a younger Melissa Pelham right now? My parting thoughts are, Jocelyn hit on it. First of all, know your purpose. Seek God. Lord, what do you have me to do? Why am I here on this earth? And once Lord reveals that to you, do some hobbies. Do things that you like to do. And those that maybe you're not familiar with, try something different. Find out who you are as a, a, a woman or a man and you know, God, God will take care of you. He'll bring people into your life that you do things you've never done before. Just be flexible. Be open. Live your life. Live your life to the fullest. Come on, clap your hands and help me appreciate it. Thank you so very much, Melissa. Sister Felicia, same questions. First, I would say that ye are complete in him. It does not take a man or a woman to complete you. You are beautifully fearfully and wonderfully made and if you never get married you are still complete in him live your life live your best life that's what i would tell a younger felicia and i will say this having been married and now single again if you live a fulfilled single life if the day comes where you might be single again for whatever reason then it won't be so foreign to you you won't have to cover so much ground because you've had a fulfilling single life, so you can have one again. Wonderful. Let's thank God for Sister Felicia Gaston. Thank you so very much. Amen. Brother Reggie Parker, what, 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 excuse me, Ross, I'm sorry. Brother Ross, what, what, what is your takeaways? What would be the final parting thoughts that you have? So I'll, I'll speak to the younger and social media. I'll put everything on social media. Save a lot for yourself. I would say, if you're going, if you're going to date or whatever, don't tell them happy business. See if they're interested in you. My uncle always told me I don't have a Bentley or anything. anything like that. He said, if you're a man of wealth, not just wealth of money. Wealth is more than just money. But if you have money, my advice will be, will be to you. If you have two cars, show the girl to bum your car. Second date, show the girl your bummy call you second time. If it gets to the third date, then you might be able to pick her up. Because if she's willing to ride with you in the bummy car, 
she's definitely um, willing to ride with you, you know, in your destiny. So, so my advice to you would be, don't show everything. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well said. I had something written down here. Hold on, wait a minute. You just want to preach all day, I see. I mean, you've been locked and loaded all month. Hold on, wait, we're going to get to you in one moment. Y'all help me appreciate Brother Ross, and let's thank him for his courage to step in at the last moment. Thank you, Brother Ross. Now, to the world-renowned evangelist, God's woman of faith and power, anointed for the Holy Ghost hour, Sister Donette Johnson. Okay, I had something written down here. God has laid out the blueprint, blueprint for your life, and it involves taking certain steps. So for the younger folks, these steps are to ensure that you grow and mature. What we often fail to realize is that each step is important. And when we rush through these steps, it is dangerous. We tend to ruin, uproot, shift, and hinder our growth and development when we rush. All steps matter. Just remember that God has a purpose for you in this exact moment, and his timing is perfect. Perfect. So don't rush your singleness. Mm 